We adore how technology is bringing more capabilities to the most affordable kinds of home theater equipment, which benefits the lowest end models the most. Dolby True HD and DTS HD Master Audio were once only found in the most expensive receivers. Today, they are only found in the most affordable ones. This simplifies things for those who want to enjoy some cinematic audio without having to shell out a lot of money for a top-of-the-line setup. One such product is the Yamaha RX V385, which was introduced in 2019 and is now the entry-level model in Yamaha's lineup of AV receivers. The RX V385 is essentially a 5.1-channel AV receiver with 70 watts of power, support for Dolby True HD and DTS HD Master Audio, the IPAL audio calibration system, and a few extra features like Virtual Cinema DSP, Bluetooth streaming, 4K signal and HER pass-through, biamp capabilities, and HDMI upscaling. All of these features come for an impressively low price of around $400. We're here to find out if this model has the performance, build quality, and sufficient features to make it an alluring offer in this low price bracket. But as we all know, pricing is only one factor in the equation. It will be intriguing to see if the great audio that Yamaha is known for producing in the home theater market can also be heard in a machine with such an aggressively cheap pricing. The RX V385 features an exact replica of the RX V383, which it was meant to replace in terms of both appearance and functionality. This isn't a huge surprise given the prevalence of similar looking devices. Let's thus explore what this one has to offer. A common feature of Yamaha designs is the use of a glossy finish on the top half of the front face and a brushed metal aluminum surface on the bottom half, which provides even such an inexpensive device a more expensive looking appearance. On the far right we have a little circular butt for direct, and on the left we have the power butt and the IPAL microphone connector. The upper half has the central display, which is in charge of showing all the receiver's operations. There is a cluster of tiny circular buttons that comprise info, memory, and tuner controls directly below the main screen. With a headphone connector on the far left, a large volume knob on the far right, and a few ports to the left of it, including an analog 3.5mm audio input and a USB port for attaching external storage, the bottom half now offers even more control possibilities. The four large scene buttons are in the center, and the input selection, tone control, straight, and program buttons are located below these four. There isn't much to say about this model because it has a similar design to the previous one and a fairly basic setup for a machine with such a low price. Although a front HDMI would be nice, at this price we cannot expect more. Additionally, we are unsure of the extent to which all of these buttons are used in modern society, and perhaps it would be better for manufacturers to reduce the number of buttons included in receivers. The RX V385 only supports the most fundamental surround settings due to its position at the bottom of the performance food chain. The types of sets you can choose from are obviously limited because the device is only listed as a 5.1 channels receiver. You can, of course, choose a 2.1 or 3.1 channel system. But if you choose such a receiver, we think you should do it for its surround capabilities rather than for its stereo performance. Although some basic level 5.1 channel receivers have been updated to accommodate the newest audio formats, there's no Dolby Atmos or DTS X support. And to be honest, it feels a little excessive for such a constrained surround setup. Dolby Atmos is somewhat useless if you don't choose a system with at least 5.1 two channels. The receiver may not be the most potent in this class, but at 70 watts per channel, it has more than enough power for living rooms and media rooms that are small to medium in size. You can get a lot of quality out of this unit in addition to having the ability to buy amp the front channels. Like all Yamaha products, this AV receiver has Cinema DSP, a sound field technology that uses sophisticated algorithms to recreate different environments. Concert halls, sports stadiums, and other locations can be used, adding an entirely new level of immersion. We have used Cinema DSP numerous times in all of our prior assessments of Yamaha IV receivers, and although in some circumstances it can improve immersion, in others the sound is unnatural and overprocessed. yet many individuals appear to find it to be a useful feature, so you should definitely give it a shot. There are 17 distinct DSP programs available for movies and music in the RX Cinema V385's DSP edition, along with Cinema DSP. The receiver also supports the up-mixing technologies Dolby Pro Logic Roman 2 and DTS Neo 6 
which turn old stereo audio tracks into full surround ones. Even a few virtual technologies are incorporated into the mix by the unit. You can enjoy surround sound without needing any special surround speakers with the first of them, which is referred to as Virtual Cinema DSP. However, you can still employ Virtual Cinema Front if you have surround speakers accessible but lack the space to place them behind the viewing area. With this option turned on, you can enjoy surround sound by positioning the surround speakers at the front. Last but not least, you can use Silent Cinema to enjoy surround or sound field effects while wearing headphones. Moving on to our movie testing, we decided to watch a movie that had a mix that was made specifically for this device because the receiver did not support the newest object-oriented audio files. Therefore, the Blu-ray disc of The Lord of the Rings, Return of the King with its reference-grade DTS HD Master audio track was our first pick. There is no better sample than this one to test a DTS HD-capable receiver since it includes a track that, in our opinion, represents the pinnacle of what this venerable format was once capable of. The receiver was able to offer a powerful and immersive performance right away. We frequently watched the movies latter half during the Siege of Minas Tirith, and the unit was able to accurately capture all the minute details that the track displays. The environs provided lots of opportunities for over-the-shoulder action, with the front channels being the busiest. We could feel activity all around us because channels shifted precisely and separated clearly and precisely. Even when the action picked up, the center channel managed to maintain its sharp distinction and excellent clarity over the dialogue, which never felt overwhelmed by the commotion taking place. The subwoofer we used for testing received all the low frequencies the unit could manage, which more than a few occasions caused our testing area to quake. Although the unit could be pushed to very high levels, it felt like it was losing some of its composure and control as we tried to increase the volume to see how far we could go. However, it is unlikely that you will ever feel the need to go to such extremes, and the unit performed admirably even at volume levels that were above normal. Overall, for the price of this receiver, we had a very exciting experience. While conversation never faded into the background of the action and the lows were punchy without overpowering the other noises, the sounds of clashing armor, screaming troops, trembling trolls, and ominous fallen animals were all portrayed with excellent resolution and precision. We also made the choice to watch Gravity on Blu-ray, which includes a sinister DTS HD Master audio mix. This time, the track provided a completely new sensation as the subwoofer went into overdrive and the oncoming explosions and debris fiercely shattered the overall quietness while the track's quieter parts revealed minute ambient sounds. While debris was flying all around the camera and keeping us on the edge of our seats, panning sound effects produced an amazing immersive environment. The conversation in the center channel received a lot of priority in the movie, and the receiver held that channel in sharp focus until the other channels joined the action shortly after. A great mix, reproduced by the RXV385 with good accuracy, clarity, and aggression. Since FLAC is not supported, we choose to use a few WAV files for our music testing. Even while such a unit cannot perform at the highest level that some of its bigger brothers can, it might still be remarkable how much musicality it possesses. We were able to differentiate the different musical instruments in space when the receiver filled our testing area with sound, demonstrating very good spatial accuracy. The unit didn't feel as like it was excelling in any particular area, so we can't claim that it felt weak in that area specifically. It seemed like things were playing it really conservatively, which is understandable given the class we are in. The receiver behaved admirably, maintaining overall good control and balance at standard or slightly over average volumes. The midrange had a complete, dynamic feel with the highs and lows balancing the entire frequency range. In all honesty, we'd be astonished if it didn't lose its stability and focus only when pushed to the absolute limit. The Yamaha RXV385 will be sure to fill your room with acoustic enjoyment, so we cannot complain about such a simple device. The receiver has pretty limited capabilities when it comes to the kind of music files it can play back, but you can stream music using the built-in USB port. As a result, WAV MP3, WMA, and MPEG-4 AAC files are supported. The receiver can handle up to 48K HE at a 16-bit maximum rate. As we draw to a close, it becomes clear from an overall analysis of the RXV385 what Yamaha set out to accomplish with it offer the highest audio quality and build at the lowest price while fitting in any additional features without running the risk of driving up the price. The final product is a good performing device with few specifications and features, 
which makes it a great choice for any entry-level surround system. The unit's performance is undoubtedly one of its greatest assets, as we were very pleased with the level of quality it produced for the money. It supports Dolby True HD and DTS HD Master Audio, has cinema DSV and virtual technologies, includes the APAL audio calibration system, and is priced very affordably while also supporting Bluetooth streaming, eARC, full 4K pass-through, and BIAMP capabilities. The lack of Dolby Atmos or DTS X support, which some other entry-level devices do offer, is a drawback. Even though this unit is not intended for very wide regions, its 70 watts of output may look a little underwhelming if you have a rather large room. Last but not least, it lacks Wi-Fi and all internet features including voice control platforms, multi-room functionality, and streaming services. In conclusion, the Yamaha RX-V385 is a great option for you to think about if you want to create a respectable surround setup at the lowest, cost feasible that will have good performance and don't care about any other special characteristics. The price is wonderful, the performance is excellent, and you receive a Yamaha branded product. What more could you want for a modest and compact home theater setup? That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please like it if you did. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Wishing you all the best until the next video.